So I'm going to call this draining model. Now, a, a, a kind of a note on nomenclature here. Um, these buttons, while, while it is quite nicely graphical and so on, it is still actually a programming language. And so when you click on the new button over there, you are actually, it's almost like it's a GUI that allows you to, let's say, define a function in Python, right? So if you had a, if you had a, a, a Python function GUI, you know that you need this def keyword to define a function in. So imagine that you had a, a, an interface where you could click a button and it would pop up a dialog and say, okay, you want to make a new function. What's the function's name? You couldn't just put anything in that function's name. It would still have to be valid Python code. In the same way, this has to be a valid Medallica class name, which conventionally uh, is, is cased using this camel case. In other words, um, initial capitals for every word. No spaces, but you can use underscores and numbers and so on. So basically all the same rules that you use for Python variables. You can see the convention by looking at the way that the, that the standard library is named. So you can see that that first order class there is just called first order and so on. So as usual, be guided by the other stuff that's already been built just to, to give you an idea. Um, confusingly, You'll name it here so that it can uh, have the correct code. So you'll see by clicking on that dialog, it's now written this code for me. I could have just written it myself as well. That's fine. You can just use any other text editor, but it does make it a little bit easier. This has not yet been saved. At this point, it's just a file that is uh, not existing. You cannot simulate a file that hasn't been saved. So either just actually save it, and I'm, I'm determining that it is becoming more and more difficult for people to understand how like, files are arranged because I think most of us interact using search more than actually navigating through folders. So be sure that you know where these files are. Um, just a, a side note. I've seen many people like, I don't know where it is. Uh, okay, so what this allows us to do this uh, system allows us to specify our parameters and things up front. So we'll specify our variables and we'll specify the equations. I'm going to kind of liberally uh, just copy and paste because we've actually got models already. So I'm just going to kind of copy and paste these equations into here. And I'm going to remind myself what the parameters are. Where are the parameters? So we have these parameters over here. I'm going to put them in here. Now, the syntax that Medallica provides um, is obviously very different from Python. The one key difference is that um, in Medallica, you have to declare variables. So what that means is that you, uh, you have to tell Medallica what kinds of variables uh, you're working with. And in our case, for almost all of the models that we'll be working with, the kinds of variables we'll be dealing with are going to be real uh, variables. And so basically you will uh, define a variable like this. So this is our diameter. Every line has to be uh, terminated by a semicolon. And this keyword parameter tells Medallica that this is a parameter. Reaching. Sorry. So very, very quickly. So we're going to have a lot of these parameter reels. The uh, variables are case sensitive, so it is fine for us to have two different variables, one big D and one small d. That's, to, that's totally fine. They will be different variables. Um, as we get more into this, we'll see that um, we have a little bit more flexibility. At the moment, I'm kind of going for the absolute bargain basement version of this, which is like the most simple way uh, that we can possibly describe this model. So these are the parameters, and then we have, so these are parameters, then we have variables. Variables are simply the same kinds of things, but without the parameter keyword, right? Now, remember that we're going to have a V, an H, and an F out, right? Those are the additional symbols that we're going to need, and so those will all just be real. So we're going to say real V, real H, real F out. And here we have our equations. Modalica is amazing. It has 
built in support for the idea of a derivative. And so instead of writing dvdt, we will write der, which is the Medallica word for the derivative, is equal to minus f out. We're going to write f out is equal to k times h. We're going to remember that we actually need that parameter as well. And remember, we fit a version of k. We've done this a couple of ways, but like the last version of k that I had was about 33. That, that was just the notebook value there, so I'm just going to use that, 33. And lastly, we have the geometry from the tank. Now that I'm going to copy and paste from our uh, other notebook where we did that calculation. You'll recall that we figured out that this was the relationship between the volume and the height, and it's parameterized by those different um, things. So I'm just going to paste that in there. So that's our height relationship. So that is V as a function of height. Now, we have two changes to make here. The first one is that um, Medallica uses a caret instead of a double uh, multiplication sign for powers, just like Excel. So, so we've, got our, uh, we've got our model equations, but uh, Medallica by itself doesn't contain pi or square root as built-in symbols. Or actually, sorry, it doesn't contain pi, it does contain square root as a built-in operator. Um, so here we have to uh, go and find Medallica constants dot pi. Let me see if I can do that now. Ah, you know what? I'm going to do this in a slightly different way just to make this a little bit more legible. Okay, now that should work. Cool. So what I've done here is I've run the, I've run the check. So it's checked for me that everything is working. And this is the full set of work that I need in order to simulate uh, this model. So I, once I've actually done the modeling, and this is for me, Medallica is the link that makes the kind of models that we're writing down in section one really click. Because this is exactly what we are doing. We're just writing down all of the equations. I want you to take note of a couple of special things here. These equations have no specific order. We don't have any, we don't have any uh, order to these equations. We can list them in any, in any form. We also did not have to do something which is very hard uh, and which will probably stop you from simulating this uh, in a straightforward way using analytic methods, which is the relationship from H to V is pretty hairy, but the relationship from V to H is even worse. As you'll notice that there's um, up to a cubic in H. So I can solve that for V, which means that I, I can write uh, H in terms of V, but I'll need to, well, you know, there's three roots. Uh, I'll need to figure out which one of those is the real root, and then the roots are crazy. They're like really hairy formulas. So Medallica actually completely allows us to get away without doing any of that. Uh, the last little bit is that uh, Medallica also allows us to specify initial conditions in a very intuitive way by specifying equations that have to hold initially. It will then numerically solve so that those equations are satisfied right at the beginning. And it'll, it's relatively intelligent with how to get to initial values. So let's just remind ourselves uh, for this particular cup that we're simulating here where H started. So H started around, let's call that 100. 
Does that make sense? So we'll say that H is 100 at initial conditions. And remember that we're probably going to want to simulate for an amount of time that is uh, not one second, because we could see that uh, in reality the cup took about 300 seconds-ish to drain. So let's just make that 300. <coughs> and now as if by magic, and here we show H, voila. So we've basically just copied the equations over. We've written that Modalica has completely sorted out all the internal relationships, all the weird stuff that we had to do. Uh, I'm not going to go that, I, I'm in fact going to leave it as an exercise for the reader to try to do the same thing with Solve IVP, which is, I'm going to go through the notebooks, but this gives you an introduction and hopefully this motivates you to, um, to understand that this is actually going to be a very useful tool. Right? This is the link that goes from the models that we're writing down. Now, in principle, all of the models that you're writing down for tutorials one and two so far, if you've written down a correctly specified model, you should be able to transcribe that model, basically using all the stuff that I've just shown you, even if you just copy and paste that template. <laughs> and you just modify it so that it now has the parameters that you identified and the variables that you identified during your modeling session and you just give them numeric values. When you press play, Modalica should be able to solve those uh, equations, the dynamic equations for you. It is a very, very beautiful thing. We'll spend a lot more time on this, and I'll be giving you some exercises to work through. There's a couple of really nice online resources for you to learn, but uh, rather than kind of, I, I feel like the really basic stuff is very hard to teach in a, in a classroom session like this, because you have to go really, really slowly, which I think is a lot better on video and paper. Uh, but I find that it's incredibly hard to find motivation to do something if you don't think that it's going to be useful. And so what I want you to come away from this whole exercise is not a, an in-depth understanding of Medallica, but like just that feeling of, wow, that looks super useful. I should learn that. Okay, we're going to be doing it as we go through this section. Cool, right? So, very useful tool. Uh, also, in this plotting window, the last bit here, because you're going to want to compare the simulation results with your data, if you click here on this CSV button, uh, you will be able to export your uh, variables to a CSV that you can then open in uh, Excel or in Python for further plotting downstream. Uh, for now, that's probably the only interaction that I expect you to have with Medallica. As we go along, I'll also be introducing tools. There are, there's a tool called OM Python, uh, which allows you to call Medallica models from Python and so on. So we're going to be extending this, uh, we're going to be extending this uh, a lot as we go along. Okay, so are there any questions just about the ideas? Obviously, the syntax is going to be weird to you, but I hope that everybody agrees that uh, modulo some kind of just syntax, right? Why does there have to be a semicolon? Because, right? That's the, that's the rules of the language. But I hope everybody now is armed with the idea that, okay, so this maps one-to-one. -one. When Carl says parameter in the class, or if the textbook says these things are parameters, I will put parameter in front of those things, and that's the signal to Medallica that those things will not be changing. Everything else, is variables, right? So if I haven't said it's a constant or a parameter, now just a little bit of a, a, a point from a Medallica point of view, the difference here is that constants are assumed never to change. Okay, so what that means is they never change ever, ever, ever. They don't change between simulation runs. You're never gonna change them later. Uh, they are like universal constants. Good things for constants are like pi. Right? We, we're not going to suddenly realize tomorrow that pi has a slightly different value than sometime initially in the uh, simulation. Uh, also, a really cool thing about this, now why I'm saying that is because of this cool thing that I'm going to show you now, which is that the parameters, unfortunately, you will not encounter these problems when you're using this because it's just a problem with my small screen when I'm, when I'm displaying. But when I'm in this plotting view, if I change uh, one of these things, 
I can re-simulate the model right from here. So I can, I can say, what if, the, what if the cup was wider, right? Like what if that was 200? A little bit of a thing, like you have to press enter to, like, to make it happen, and then you have to press this button. It's supposed to like, represent re-simulation. And so when you click that, it'll run through that. You now you'll see it does quite a bit less. Because at this point, it's only changing that parameter and rerunning the simulation. It's not compiling a whole program uh, like it was in the past. And then we've now re-simulated with a wider top of the cup. Now, this goes for all of the stuff, but what you will notice is that pi is not shown in this list because we said it was a constant, which kind of says, well, we're never going to change it. Right, so, so that's basically just from a UI point of view what the difference is when you actually run. The parameters will be shown to you in that, in that list, but the constants will not. Um, also, you will see that kind of, it is true that it'll show you time values of even the parameters. It's a bit weird, but I think it's just so that they can actually show it in this box and you can kind of uh, make changes. So you'll see that the, the things that vary with time don't have entry boxes. So you can't change, for instance, just randomly change f out, because remember, that's following from other stuff. But you have little entry boxes for all the parameters. 